Did you? Well, no. You look at statistics from the world trade economy and you guys see that. Oh, hi, folks. I'm Matt and welcome to my expanded universe, a show where I go through the entire EU in chronological order as best I know how. We we're just talking about sports. Okay, so we're going to go back to Marvel Comics, the Marvel Comics written by Archie Goodwin. I'm just going to talk about two of them today. Uh, the first one is number 16. Now, in this issue, it doesn't star any of the main characters. Let's pause and think about that for a minute before I go even any further. Uh, this comic book had only been going on for a little bit over a year. Star Wars is still huge. People are going nuts over this movie. They can't wait for the sequel. It's hot in their minds and all they can do is think Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. A bunch of kids were disappointed they didn't get any toys. Now the toys are rolling out. Uh, well, I guess it, the toys would have rolled out a couple months earlier. But now people are just really into Star Wars and of course kids want to read the comic book. If you can imagine this, the Star Wars Marvel comic books were outselling anything else Marvel had. That's right, they were outselling Spider-Man. <laughs> well, which ones are worth more now, right? Uh, but yeah, so Marvel's just shilling out these uh, Star Wars books. And you think, you know, anyone of sound mind would say, well, we got to give them what they want, right? Which means more Luke, more Leia, more Han, more Chewie, R2-D2, C-3PO, the whole gang. No. In issue 16, Archie Goodwin says, we're not going to use any of them. We're going to have our own little story of some of the characters that we've already created. And then uh, this new character we're going to introduce, and we're going to put the focus on them. Now, this was a very bold choice, something you didn't have to do at this point with the popularity of Star Wars as it was, but Archie Goodwin decided to take a, a step down a path in a different direction. So I got to applaud him for that. Now, their story revolves around a bounty hunter named Balance, and he is on the search for Jim Deshawn, who he thinks is Luke Skywalker. Now, Jim, with two M's, was on Han's, you know, super team, his super team of eight, uh, the ones that were defending from uh, the cloud, uh, the moisture farmer from the Cloud Riders, and he looks like Luke, maybe, and so he acts like him, I guess. And Valance mistakes him and thinks that is, you know, Luke Skywalker. That's the kid that there's a big bounty on. So he goes after him. Of course, he's going after the wrong person, but he doesn't know that. Now, Valance is, to me, he wasn't that interesting a bounty hunter. I mean, at the time, I'm guessing he would have been what they would have considered cool. But in no ways is he a Boa Fett or anyone else that they've come up with before. Score was more interesting than him. But it revolves around him and then some of Han's friends that you've already established, like Don Juan and Jackson, who actually go to Jim's aid to try to stop Valance from, you know, of course, capturing or hurting Jim. Uh, it's a decent story, and like I said, it's a break from the norm and a very bold decision. And the fans hated it. <laughs> they did not like this. Uh, in letter columns later on in the comic book, you could hear them complaining about issue 16. How it was garbage. It didn't have any of your favorite, you know, stars from the movie in it, and it was just totally pointless to them. Which I have to be honest, if I was reading the comic book at this time. I would have said the same thing. I would have said, what? No Luke Lair? Huh? What is this? Ah! You know, thrown that issue away and uh, you know, prayed that they would have stopped doing that. And of course they did. They went straight back to the main group in issue 17. Uh, in issue 17, it's basically Luke having flashback of when he was on Tatooine and having an adventure with Biggs. Now, it makes sense that Luke would have this flashback. Remember, Biggs is a character who we see very little of in the Expanded Universe, and then here comes the movie, and he's dead. And we're, we're told, and we know that going into it, that he is a good friend of Luke Skywalker. Although the movie really didn't have time to show that impact, just say, hey, yeah, there you are, Luke. Remember me from all the deleted scenes? So you didn't get that impact that we were supposed to feel with Luke missing his best friend just like that. So that he's reminiscing over some good times, yeah, you do that. When a friend passes away, you think about good old times. Now the story's okay, you know, they're running from the regular threats, the uh, Sam people, the Tusken Raiders and whatnot, but uh, the story actually may, may tie into a few things from the movie, may set up a few things, this flashback in a sense. 
Uh, for one, they are in his T16 Skyhopper and it crashes, which could be the reason why he's maybe working on it. You see it in his, you know, his little garage shed in the background. Maybe that was him working on it, you know, after that crash had happened. It, that, that was never established. That's just, you know, uh, just an opinion there. The other one is the macro binoculars that we see in the movie. Uh, in this comic book, Luke is telling Biggs that he may want to buy himself a pair of those, which is kind of neat. Uh, unnecessary setups, but still they try to connect things in. It's a nice story. It's the first, you know, EU story that we had Biggs in, I believe. So it's, you know, take it for what it's worth, but it was fine. So anyway, that is all I'm going to talk about today, but I'll be back with more in another video. See you then.